Everywhere you turn, you see more discussion about how expensive it is to live right now, not to mention to get on the property ladder. Rising prices and less spending power mean first-time buyers are worse off than a year ago. And this is a study out from the Banking and Payments Federation showing the average first-time buyer mortgage was 263000 in June, but that's up thirty grand compared to what a typical first-time buyer was borrowing a year ago. And this is a huge issue, Kira, for an entire generation out mm-hmm. there right now who feel as if they have been excluded from the housing market. The government, no doubt, will point to the fact that there's 9,000 houses being built this year, more than have ever built in a single year in the history of the state. But the challenge is that the lived reality for younger voters is they cannot get a home. And they'll read this and they'll say, well, that's me further down the list. At the net effect of which is the government is fighting a losing battle to convince electors that they have competency to to take on the biggest issue of the last decade, which is housing. All this is doing is sowing discontent amongst an entire generation. Government will say it's market forces, they'll say it's inflation, they'll say it's issues outside of their control. But the net effect is that people don't have homes. Yeah, and and I think 9,000 houses are obviously massively welcome, but I I think the shortfall there remains something of the magnitude of about 20,000 houses. We think we need about 30,000 a year currently, and we're on on about a third of it. Uh, I also think when you look at being 30,000 more in debt, Jonathan, by the time you pay that back, it's 60,000. And that's probably an extra year of work out of someone's working life that a whole year of, the, of their income from, from work will have to go towards f- sort of, you know, feeding this mortgage or indeed they'll have to work for a year longer. So there is a huge difficulty for people here. But having said that, you know, I, I understand why the electorate and why young people in particular will feel disgruntled. But the reality of it is, is, is this is a planning situation and, and this is a supply situation. And we have a lack of supply. We have a planning system that is slow and torturous. We have nimbyism rampant in this country, including politicians in many cases objecting to houses in their own constituency during a housing crisis, which I find personally but they won't, But they won't awful. care. Again. The point is, the younger voters won't care. They're going to go and yeah, but you get the, the gov- alternative Yeah, but place. you get the government that you, you deserve because there is sli- supply chain issues, there are com- construction infl- inflation, there's all kinds of issues feeding into this. And lest we forget, and I think we do often forget because we're a small island uh, that we're, is a little bit insular at times, this is going on in every other country in Europe as well, that there are difficulties with people getting their foot on the housing ladder. And that and that is an that is an absolute issue. But I have no doubt that this is the issue of this generation, and I have no doubt that this is the issue that politicians will have to grapple with at the next general election. Because, as you say, and I have you know young adult children who have no notion, and I have no idea how they're ever going to be able to afford a house currently unless something changes radically, because things are beyond the reach of most normal people.